there is estimated projections or data that 10 out of every 100 kidney transplants are trafficking are trafficked 10 like they are smuggled so we have 10 percent who have furnished houses with their kidneys likely you can put it that way but when you look at it in the other flip side the typical person who would be lured into 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 organ trafficking or any of the organs trafficking is not the it's not like you can sit and ask questions it is the person who probably is not well educated it is the person who is an, in an extremely low socioeconomic status it is someone who probably has already been involved in a human trafficking of sorts mm. in in a minority in okay. is a slave somewhere and then they are trafficked and they don't even know this could be happening to them you know so it's, it's difficult to say someone can have a mansion courtesy of undonated kidney i think most people who sell their kidneys buy cars why and it's very easy to identify them. They are not traffic. My car, my car. Their kidneys. I know. I know. Okay. I see. Unlikely. Unlikely. The, 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 the part itself. So, um, for example, someone donates a part. Umesema, but see, there is no clean way of selling your kidneys. Um, someone donates a part, and then after donating, you need it back, like legit, by the way. Like you donated to someone, they are healthy. I love you start suffering. The other kidney starts failing. Can you claim it back, like legally? Because at least you have lived kidogo, courtesy of me, but I want my kidney. <laughs> <laughs> like, I, I have things I need to take care of. Is, is, that, is that part of the contract in Kusaidiam to Nakidniako? Afana, Afana, it hasn't been. It, it, it sounds, it sounds uh, theoretically possible, but practically, I haven't experienced it. Practically, it's fairly rare because what we do is we have to do extensive analysis of the person who is donating. So we are able to tell this person is completely healthy. They will never have kidney All problems. All factors held constant. This patient will live to full life with, with one, one kidney. kidney. But then life happens. Then life happens, I know. Be honest. In your, Would you be on your unaona unaenda mm. you start seeing jesus and you know someone is thriving with your kidneys out there can you that that's an interesting ethical question you would like to pose in a in a team of it, doctors it, and hear what they say <laughs> that this person is with my kidney interesting interesting and probably that person is even flossing on social media as in <laughs> <this> is, <laughs> like taking <laughs> a selfie of their kidney yeah, yeah, no, <laughs> as in, they are living the good life like oh look at what i just knew and you are going and what you are going for is a kidney <laughs> you can't force them to donate it back but okay <laughs> but donate it back you can't force someone to donate it back and now this is the point the point is this person at this point cannot be a valid candidate to donate you get because you must meet several checklists for you to donate so you must have two healthy kidneys so so that we pick one and you remain with the other. So already being a recipient knocks you off of the list of donors. Because what we do is we, we create a database of potential donors, for instance. And, oh, and for donation, you, you only get one. There is no way at people can donate two kidneys for you. No, no, no. That's, that's impossible because you can't put the patient to harm. Not really a patient. The donor is not a patient. It's a healthy person. So you can't put get them to Get two harm. donors. Oh, I see your point. Like, <laughs> <laughs> not really, not really, because the, the, there are two things involved. There are two things involved. One of them is really you don't want to be superfluous. You want to be... Too, you, you don't need to be too healthy. That's too superfluous in layman's language. Uh, okay, that layman's language is, uh, is skewed. Anyway, yes, the point is, you are treating the person so that they can get back to normal, not so that they can get super normal. So if I told you someone can function with one kidney, why are you giving them two kidneys? This is number one. Number two, Have even- Have you heard of multibet? Multibet. Okay, uh -huh. number two. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. But number two is yeah. even the person who is receiving the kidney, you are, you've really thoroughly assessed them and matched them to almost perfectly with the donor. And that much is a, a very long process of doing blood grouping, something we call tissue typing, all those to make sure that there is very minimal chance that this person can reject this kidney. 
Okay. But despite all that science has found, people might still start rejecting in slow ways. Even if when you are, even when you unmatched everything, your body is still constantly feeling, I have something here that's not mine. So it starts sending us carries, we call them antibodies, oh. to start attacking the donated okay. kidney. Okay. Now what happens is most of the people who have a donated organ will be constantly on some medication that can suppress that reaction okay. that the body is trying to do. Okay. So you see, you know, if you overload the person, you're already, again, subjecting them to more and more medication. So it isn't practice and it isn't uh, <coughs> science to give to, okay. to organ. Unless you give one, it fails and now you have to to Sour. go another round. Sour. One of the reasons I'm so glad we have you on the show is to please demystify one more thing. Uh, there was uh, a post going around on social media, Juicy, you know, in the wake of all oh, people transitioning, f men m moving to become women, and women wanting to be men, transgender. There was a post that was going around on social media about a woman who was transitioning to be a man, wakangwa transformer immediately after mtu wameenda wakamudunga. Can it work? <laughs> Is that kind of a transplant Possible. I want to leave that to Dr. Aluora to come on the show and, <laughs> and respond so that I don't I don't, I don't but veer into his know. area of specialty. Yes. That's a specialty that a colleague called plastic surgeon would really drive in. But I wanted to make two, one comment. One comment is that there is a gender corrective surgery that would be within the realms of medical ethics, for instance, as I speak. In Kenya, for instance, if a child is born, and their private parts have got some deformity, you are not able to quickly tell if they were developing to be a complete boy or a complete girl. You know... There are people in between. Yes, you can get that, a small percentage where you see the private parts were developing to be a boy, but they're not completely gotten to be a boy, and then you're confused, is this child a little more to one's girl, is a little more to one's a boy? And therefore, there is a medical requirement for that point to make this person functional and there is a lot of extensive work up to understand what we call the genetic makeup okay. because by the time the baby is demonstrating what we call uh, characteristics that say this is a boy or this is a girl you see it will be way after they have started growing up but you're able to check inside internally and see hey, they have the internal organs that belong to a lady so even the external organs we have to refashion them into this line. If they have internal organs that say this is a girl and then the external organs and the external parts, reproductive parts are not clearly developed to be that, then how do we facilitate that? So there that is therapeutic or what we call treatment. It's not just fashioning people for the for the sake of fashioning people. Uh, so you so Apa, where you are saying mm. you cannot tell whether it's a boy mm. or it's a girl. Mm. You're saying Iko bata ijamea yote. Yes. Kuna external. <laughs> Sasa ukiangalia any, 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 any human person when they are growing, there are some things we call primary sexual characteristics, secondary sexual characteristics. Let me give an example when people are getting into adolescence and puberty. Boys will break their voice. Boys will start growing beard, etc. You see, those are obvious for every lay person to say that's a male and this is a female. Even the general physical appearance. But yes. when they are born, in total, one day old, you can't tell, you so can't tell a, 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 a male or a female, a boy or a girl, unless you look at the private parts. So what you're saying is, there are people who grow into adulthood, kama ijamea yote, the people who get insulted kwa social media, so it means, uh, in, these are actually, they could be not men, they are just half past girl. Si hivo sasa, si hivo sana, si hivo sana. Mm. Actually, the, the question of who has small parts or not when they are getting into adolescence is not a, it's not a function of vile ilikuwa ina male. Oh, no, si vile It's a function of maybe the, just the makeup, the, 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 the parents' profile. I mean, if someone has a small dad, why are you expecting them to be gigantic? And, 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 and the rest is no, perhaps... No, the dad is a whole ama. The dad has a whole, <laughs> <laughs> and, and probably even what we call the hormones, because the hormones also contribute. So I, I'm not coming there. I am actually just looking at the structure. Let's even avoid the question of is it big, is it small. Oh. Let's see, is it actually shaped like a boy's private parts, oh. or is it shaped like a girl's private oh, parts? Uh, now, you. you can see that in a young one-day-old, and you're not able to decipher 
were they almost getting to a boy or almost getting to a girl? At that level, all our eyes cannot tell us because number one, you cannot tell by looking at the past. Number two, you cannot wait for 20 years for them to break their voice so that you know, oh, it ah. was supposed to be a boy and you forgot and wasted time. So then there are extensive investigations that you can look. For instance, when you scan inside, you can tell this was supposed to be a girl. This is actually meant to be a girl because inside we can see the human reproductive organs for a, a lady. We have the uterus, the ovaries and all that oh. or something. So you can do some scans and then you can do some special test, extensive special test. And therefore you are able now to correct the defect because it will be a defect in the okay. development that probably this part was supposed to develop was not complete. So there's a way you can do some corrective surgery and then as they grow into adulthood, even okay. when they're getting into puberty, now the normal reproductive organs will grow normally. Now the rest of the craze that has come about transgender, someone wants to be completely transformed from male to female and vice versa, I, I don't want to comment on that. Okay. I don't want to comment on that. But thank you for clarifying because uh, Apoqua size, uh, you, you've explained it well. I thought that you judge. Like you look at a baby, mnaona, imefika hapa ama, it's not long enough, and then you round off to the nearest gender. You, <laughs> no, you, round no. off, you either round off to the nearest girl or to the nearest man. No, no, no. It's, you it's, look, it's, it's you very, don't look on the outside. It's very elaborate and extensive uh, science and research.